Sometimes people mess up, make mistakes, and cause problems. Usually the mistakes people make are pretty mundane, but if you're a captain of a small ship, mistakes can escalate into massive catastrophes. Here are the top 15 biggest ship collisions. Number 15. Cruising into Venice Venice is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world, but with limited space for people to stay during the peak seasons. One of the best ways to visit is by cruise ship, much to the annoyance of the locals. While the ships usually enter port and leave again without any problems, there are occasional incidents that happen because of the occasional unpredictable weather, and in 2019, one managed to collide with a wharf and a tourist boat in the Geodeca Canal. The 13-deck MSC Opera experienced an engine failure just as it was approaching, so there was nothing the crew could do except for sounding the horn and hoping for the best. People on the dock ran to safety, and those on board a riverboat that was moored alongside the wharf did their best to disembark before the cruise ship struck. It hit the dock and then slid into the smaller boat, forcing it from its moorings and causing tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Fortunately, no one was killed, but five people were severely injured. Following the accident, the mayor of Venice insisted that cruise ships alter their routes they take to avoid anything like this from happening again. Number 14. The MSC Armonia the 902-foot-long MSC Armonia is a 65,000 gross tonnage cruise ship that takes an expert eye to steer. Unfortunately, the crew and control in April of 2018 probably needed more training because they completely miscalculated their approach to a port in Honduras. As the footage shows, it appears to be traveling towards the dock at an unusual angle and with too great a speed, and what happens next feels inevitable. It crashed into the dock, causing a number of structures to fall into the water, and instead of stopping, it continued on around the shoreline to a nearby beach where it deployed its anchor. A few moments later, it reversed out into ocean waters, but quite how this happened still isn't clear. According to the cruise company that operates the ship, it had been scheduled to stop at the port, but they weren't sure how its route deviated so much that it grazed the end. Fortunately, no one was injured and the damage was minimal, but it could have been a very different story. The ship was able to continue on its 14-day cruise around the Caribbean, although everyone on board probably held their breath a little every time it approached a port for the rest of the trip. Number 13. Container Ship versus Football Ground You may be able to understand if a ship manages to hit a rocky outcrop that's beneath the waves, or a smaller vessel that's sailed in front of it and is obscured from view. But the one thing you'd always expect a crew in charge of a boat to be aware of is the mainland. Sometimes, though, it's not as easy as that, and this footage shows even the simplest of obstacles can prove to be too much to overcome. In 2014, it seemed like any other day, joggers and athletes were using the Stanley Ho Sports Center in Hong Kong's Pok Fu Lam district in the same way that they always do. But on this occasion, things were going to get a little more exciting. The Hansa Constitution, a German-registered ship that was fully loaded with containers, managed to run aground on the shore just next to the park to the amazement of onlookers. The ship dropped its anchor in one last attempt to slow itself down before making contact, but it's to no avail. It became lodged in the bank and needed the assistance of two tugboats to drag it free. The company wasn't forthcoming with a reason why this may have happened, but the most likely explanation is that it experienced a sudden loss of power, which often means a loss of steering too. So the crew wouldn't have been able to do anything apart from watch and hope for the best. Number 12. The Yushin Maru 3 Despite international agreement between most countries of the world, there are still a few that continue to hunt and capture whales from the oceans, and Japan is one of them. The ships that go out to track down the majestic beasts are often followed by environmental campaigners, something that their crews don't take kindly to, and the results can be intense. This is footage of the Yushin Maru 3, a Japanese whaling ship that was being followed by two Sea Shepherd ships in 2014. The ships were doing their best to keep the Yushin Maru 3 away from any whales, and the Japanese crew resorted to dangerous measures to get away. They first tried dragging cables around the ships to damage their propellers, but after this failed, they resorted to even more extreme measures. At one point, the Yushin Maru 3 skipper decides to purposefully ram directly into the Bob Barker at high speed, which caused serious damage to this vessel. It's worrying enough to see an accidental collision like this, but the fact that it was an active decision to do so and to the risk of crews on both ships makes it a criminal act at best. Number 11. Container Ships in Nansha Port Container ships can carry such huge loads of cargo that when they face an emerging incident, it's almost impossible for the crew to slow them down or steer them out of the way in time. 
This footage was recorded in December of 2018 and shows what happened to two ships that belonged to the Quanshu Ansheng Shipping Corporation. The 4,300-ton Rianjin-15 was approaching the Nansha port in Guangzhou when it lost control and missed its berth. Instead, it sailed straight into the Haisu-10, a 698-ton ship that was already docked at the port, and there was nothing either crew could do to prevent it. A number of containers fell off the Haisu-10, and 16 were damaged. Following the incident, the Haisu-10 was left listing to one side, and the port emergency authority had to deploy rescue teams to pump water out of its interior to stabilize it. The larger Renjin-15 also suffered significant damage to its hull, and while it didn't breach in the same way as the other ship, it was no longer seaworthy and had to go in for extensive repairs. Miraculously, no one was injured and no pollution was released into the water, but investigations soon began to determine who was responsible and how to prevent it from happening again. Number 10. Grain Ship Hits Tuna Trawler in October of 2010, a 738-foot-long grain-carrying ship called the MV Grand Rodosi was approaching the Port Lincoln Wharf in South Australia when things went terribly wrong. As it came close to moor, it seems as if there was a loss of steering and the bow collided straight into a tuna trawler. Said by eyewitnesses to look like a can opener on a tin of baked beans, the trawler, the Apollo S, was split open and completely crushed. It's clear that there was no hope of the vessel surviving this, and the extent of the damage became clear when the grain ship was finally pulled away, and the trawler rolled onto its side with part of the jetty that had collapsed on top of it. Believed to be worth around $17 million, it took just 25 minutes for the trawler to sink, while the much larger vessel managed to escape virtually unscathed. No personnel were injured, but a large quantity of diesel was spilled into the water, and port authorities had to deploy teams to try to contain it before it washed ashore on the nearby beaches. The jetty, too, was severely damaged and had to be closed for several weeks while repairs were carried out. Number 9. The Sea Grand versus a Bridge You've heard the dangers of drinking and driving a road car, but the consequences of drinking and driving a large ship can be even worse. In February of 2019, a 370-foot-long Russian ship, the Sea Grand, had arrived in Busan, South Korea, and was loaded with 3 million pounds of steel coins before leaving dock and heading back to Vladivostok. The vessel should have continued sailing north along the coast, but for some reason took a turn into a small bay after a couple of miles and headed straight towards the double-decker Guangdong Bridge. Officials saw the ship had deviated and radioed the captain, but he didn't speak English well enough to be able to respond. Even though it looks as if the ship began to try to reverse, it was way too late, and it collided with the bridge. Traffic began to stop as the drivers realized what was happening, and the foremast of the ship was broken. Amazingly, though, the ship didn't stay in place and instead reversed out of the bridge and continued on its journey. A rare case of a marine hit and run. Of course, it was constantly being tracked by the Coast Guard, who caught up with it with a squad of four patrol boats and forced it back into port. It was then that the captain was breathalyzed and found to be almost three times the legal limit. In the following investigation, it was also suspected that the vessel had also collided with the cruise ship as it left the original port, and while it's unclear if the captain was at the controls at the time, he was arrested because he bears full responsibility. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. The Disney Dream some of the most spectacular cruise ships you'll see at sea are those that are operated by Disney. But despite having Mickey Mouse statues on their hulls, nothing can distract away from them when an accident occurs. And that's exactly what happened in 2017. The Disney Dream was backing up to a pier in Nassau in the Bahamas when it failed to stop and collided with it, making a loud crunching sound as it did so. After realizing the error, the captain of the ship powered forward so the damage could be surveyed, and fortunately it hadn't affected the seaworthiness of the vessel. The dock, too, wasn't significantly damaged, as the cruise ship was able to moor up against it on the second attempt. A few days later, however, the ship was seen with makeshift patches on its bow where it had clearly sustained some superficial damage. But this didn't interfere with its schedule, and the company was able to fix it between cruises. Quite whether the captain that day will ever be allowed to helm one again, however, is a different story. Number 7. The Petra Star Large ships only really have the ability to steer themselves when their engines are running, so if they find themselves moving across the water at any other time, there's often a frantic race to take control of things. This was the situation the crew of the Petra Star found themselves in in 2018, when they found themselves drifting perilously close to the Inse Hamburg. 
Both vessels were anchored at the Kafkaz port anchorage in the Kerch Strait in the Black Sea. It was an opportune time for the crews to rest, knowing that they had a long journey ahead of them, but the weather took a turn for the worst, and a storm whipped up currents over the water's surface. The Petra Star began to drag anchor, while the Insa Hamburg remained in place, and by the time that either crew had realized what was happening, it was too late. The Petra Star collided into the other vessel, and both ships suffered from extensive damage. Luckily, none of the crew were injured and the damage didn't affect either ship's ability to stay afloat. So the Petra Star was eventually towed far away where it dropped anchor again to wait repairs. And the Insa Hamburg remained exactly where it already was. Number 6. General Cargo Ship Even when ships are at anchor or moored in port, they're always meant to be someone on the bridge monitoring what's happening just in case they begin to drag anchor, a rope breaks, or if there's another type of emergency taking place. There's a good reason for this, because you can never totally be sure that a vessel is completely secure, and if there's not somebody ready to quickly respond, it can mean the difference between life and death, or at least a huge repair bill. The Black Sea is a place that's particularly notorious for having unpredictable weather conditions that can blow in with very little warning, and in 2018 two vessels were caught out. The Sarah F, a general cargo ship, began to drag anchor and had engaged the engines to try to get control. It proved to be too little too late, however, as the vessel collided with a neighboring one and caused slight damage to both. Probably the biggest pain, though, was that both ships' anchors became tangled up with one another, and short of deciding to cut them loose and install new ones, it's a complicated task to pull them free. An investigation was launched into the incident, and the blame was placed on the crew of the Sarah F. The captain had been asleep at the time, and it was found that the chief officer who was on watch at the time had also been asleep in the bridge. Number 5. Car Ferry Hits Wall In April of 2017, a car ferry was departing the Puerta de la Luz port on the Spanish island of Gran Canaria when it suddenly experienced an electrical fault that left the crew without any means to steer it. Videos of the incident show that it proceeded to crash head-on into the nearby harbor wall, and there was nothing anyone could do to stop it. You can see how powerful the impact was, as the wall collapses under the bow. It's lucky there weren't any vehicles driving along the road on the other side at the time, because they wouldn't have stood a chance of surviving. Unfortunately, 13 passengers who were on board the ship were injured, five of whom had to be hospitalized. But the ship was able to dock at the port soon after, so the remaining people on the ship could disembark and stay the night in a hotel before a replacement vessel arrived. The ship itself did suffer serious damage, and the collapsed wall was costly to fix, too. The biggest problem this incident caused, however, was an almost two-mile-long oil slick that had been caused because the ferry had crashed through a series of underwater fuel pipes. Not only did this cause a huge mess that port authorities frantically scrambled to clean up, but it also affected the refueling of other ships and severely slowed down operations for several months until everything could be fixed. Number 4. Carnival Cruises Carnival Cruises is one of the largest cruise operators in the world, and with so many ships it almost seems inevitable that one would be involved in an accident. In December of 2019, the company's insurance broker probably couldn't believe what they were hearing when they were told that two of their cruise ships had actually managed to crash into each other while in port at Cozumel in Mexico. According to the company, the Carnival Glory ship was attempting to dock at the port when it collided with a Carnival Legend ship. Six passengers on the Carnival Glory ship were injured and went to the medical center for treatment, but it appears as if no one on the other vessel was injured because most of them were either asleep or on the shore at the time. Most passengers on either ship had no idea that an accident had actually occurred, and it was only when they saw the vessels from the outside that the extent of the damage was known. Neither one suffered any structural problems that affected their seaworthiness, but there was definitely some severe aesthetic damage that led to the closure of several decks. The company never released details on the extent of the damage or the cost of fixing it, but the glory definitely took the brunt of the impact and continued on for the rest of the cruise without any interference to its schedule. While this may seem bad enough, it was almost even worse. Another ship, the Royal Caribbean's Oasis of the Seas, was also nearby at the time, and had it become involved in the collision, the repair bill could have quite easily run into the millions. Number 3. The Milano Bridge In April of 2020, the Milano Bridge, a 13,000-ton cargo vessel, was entering Busan in South Korea when it seemingly lost control. It had lined up alongside the dock, but kept swinging in towards the shore before crashing into one of the support cranes. The gantry crane was completely destroyed, according to port officials, and as a result, a full investigation was launched. The ship, which wasn't carrying any containers at the time, had been approaching the port at too high a speed and failed to slow down in time. 
According to the harbor master, it was traveling at eight knots rather than the recommended six knots for approach, and it was also contending with a strong side wind. It was also too light to maneuver, as could be seen by the way the propeller was exposed above the water surface, and this means that the ship wasn't carrying anywhere near enough ballast for a vessel of its size. It also managed to brush up against another container ship, the C-SPAN Ganges, during the incident, and authorities placed the blame firmly on the captain. In recreations of the event, they found that had the propeller been fully underwater and had the ship been traveling at less than seven knots, then it would have easily been able to handle the situation and the incident could have been completely avoided. Number two, the MT Hirmand. There's a general rule in shipping that the larger ship has the right of way because it's more difficult to maneuver. And also because if there's a collision, it's almost always going to be the smaller vessel that suffers the most damage. Still, when you're dealing with two large ships that take a while to respond to controls, sometimes there's very little anyone can do but sit back and wait to see what happens. In 2015, two ships were attempting to navigate the same stretch of water near Singapore when they soon realized that there wasn't enough room for both of them. The MT Hirmand, an oil tanker owned by the National Iranian Tanker Company, took way too tight a turn as it tried to maneuver around a larger vessel. Quite what the captain was thinking is not entirely clear, but he didn't leave anywhere near enough space to do what he was trying to do. Unsurprisingly, his ship crashes into the stationary one, and it was simply a case of good fortune that neither of them suffered any serious damage. The Hirmand was simply able to back off and reconsider its position before deciding that it was probably best to wait for its turn to enter the port like every other ship in the area was doing. Number one, Singapore Harbor. Quite often with ship collisions, everyone around the vessels involved can see exactly what's about to happen, but for some reason, the captains of these ships appear to be absolutely clueless. With such a vast ocean to sail around, it's a surprise that vessels manage to get very close to each other unless they're in port, but even when they're moored out at sea, they need to keep watch out just in case a reckless captain is trying to take a shortcut straight through them. This footage shows one of the most reckless collisions ever caught on camera. It's being recorded by a crew member on a ship at anchor next to a larger vessel, who has spotted a cargo vessel that's on a collision course with it. He shrieks out in terror, perhaps not because he thinks it'll change anything, but because it helps him deal with his own panic, as the other ship continues to sail directly towards the one next to him without any sign of slowing down whatsoever. To make matters worse, it has a platform sticking out from its bow, which would surely cause far more damage during the collision than would happen otherwise. Amazingly, though, the gangplank actually scrapes over the top of the larger ship, and it almost seems as if they've got away with it. That's until the main bow of the ship makes contact and punches a hole into the other. By this time, the ship has lost all of its momentum and is stationary in the water, but the damage has already been done. Neither ship was able to sail away from this incident, and it took salvage teams and shipbuilders a number of weeks before they could be pried apart and repaired. Watch our Waves playlist for more Top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos.